Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church's online worship service. I am Pastor Sarah, and it's my absolute joy to be the pastor here in this community and to bring you a bunch of announcements this morning. Um, we are still sheltering in place, and so we're gathering, but we're gathering in different ways, and I want to invite you to one of those. We've got a very exciting project coming up. It's called Do It Together. And we need two things from you for you to participate. The first is we want to know, are there any skills or things that you want to learn? Whether it be like, hey, I really actually don't know how to use the drill that I own. Or maybe you want to learn how to keep succulents alive. Or maybe that's just me. Um, or maybe you have a skill that you can share. So that's the second thing. So either you have something that you want to learn or you have a skill that you can share. Please email us and let us know if you are interested in that. But we have a pilot class for Do It Together. Um, we're going to start with organizational skills. So I'm going to teach a weird skill that I have outside of pastoring is I love to make things organized. So from church closets to my personal closet. So the first class we're going to do in Do It Together is called, you ready? Collaboratively curbing your clutter. I can't believe I actually got that out in one take. Um, whether you have a drawer that needs organization or a closet that needs to be redone, we're going to start by a class on August 13th at 7 p.m. That's just going to be a class where we're going to gather together on Zoom, talk a little bit about organizational skills, and then on the 27th of August, we're going to have another class from 7 to 8, and we're going to talk about what you committed to and what you were able to do. Because DIY is fun, but DIT, doing it together, is more fun. We have a culture right now with lots of do-it-yourselfers, but we have so much that we can learn from each other. So we hope that this will be a way for First United to gather together in kind of a unique way. So be looking for those classes. Sign up. You can sign up either on our website or um, by emailing us. To participate in the services, if you want to be part of the liturgy or the work of the people, again, just let us know by emailing us. We will be happy to have you as part of the team. Children and parents of children, on Mondays, we send out curriculum that has some videos for our little ones, and then we also have um, questions that go with that that you can do throughout the week. It's our hope that the compassion stuff is stuff that you can do with your children, again, to just maintain connection. But we would love to see any examples of that. We also continue to be taking the You're Being Prayed For coloring sheets to um, the different homes around that we're delivering food to. So if you want to draw those, we have a brand new coloring sheet that just came out. You can hear about all of these things by signing up for one of our social media accounts and keeping in touch or by email. If you're looking for us on social media, we're First United CM. So that's on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. They're great ways to stay connected to the community. If you're watching this on a Sunday at 10 o'clock, we watch this service together. There's a chat room, again, as a way of staying connected at firstunitedcm.online.church. And if you go to that, um, there's also a way that you can hop in after that to the Facebook group where we do prayers of the people, as well as a way of connecting with announcements. I know that was a lot of information. Um, so if you want to hop onto our website, you can also check out everything that I just said. Good morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm Annika. And I'm Jonathan. And we're going to be doing the call to worship for you this morning. I'll be the liturgist, and Jonathan will be the people, so just repeat after Jonathan. All right. When we gather, either in person or online, may we be as welcoming as Sarah and Abraham, who were quick to serve the stranger. In faith. May we proclaim that nothing is too big for God. In moments of holy surprise. May we laugh with deep, abiding joy. For God is in the holy surprise. God is in the winding path. And God is in our presence today. Let, Let us worship, worship holy God. God. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Will you join me now in singing Joy of the Lord? Though tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. 
When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in my heart, I will praise you, Lord. my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength in the darkness I'll dance in the shadows I sing the joy of the Lord is my strength Not see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. When I cannot feel your hand of mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. Oh, you shine with glory, Lord of light. I feel alive with you in your presence now. I am alive with you. There is strength when I say, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadow. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Genesis chapter 18, um, verses 1 through 15, and then chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. A son promised to Abraham and Sarah. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran to the front of the tent entrance to meet them and bowed to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to, into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk, and the, and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before, before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? 
Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time in which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah had borne him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning again, friends. This is the start of a brand new series. Uh, we are starting talking about unraveled. Um, unraveled, what does that mean? Well, have you ever felt unraveled? I don't know, like right now, where everything you thought you kind of had neatly knit up, everything that you sort of had planned kind of comes undone and you become unraveled. So we're gonna do a three week series on just stories about being unraveled and how some unexpected things happen out of that. I'm looking forward uh, to this series. I can't wait. We're gonna start with um, kind of the idea of being unraveled and surprised by joy. So let us pray. God, as always, I simply ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together here online would be acceptable to you because, God, you are indeed our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So like I said, we are starting a series on being unraveled. Now, if you listened to the announcements earlier, you heard that I'm gonna lead a class on organization because here's the thing, I hate being unraveled. I wouldn't necessarily describe myself as a type A personality, but I think maybe, maybe I kind of am. I like to know um, what the plan is, where we're going, and although I have like a little bit of spontaneity in me, there really is this sense that I like to know what's happening. So the last, I don't know, five months, have felt really unnerving. We come to this story this morning, this story of Sarah, the story of Sarah laughing, a story of Sarah and Abraham being absolutely surprised by their expectations um, not being met in the way that they thought would be met, being met in a different way. And, and oftentimes we, we tell this story as if it's a faithlessness in Sarah. And I gotta tell you, the story has bothered me ever since I was little for three reasons. I think when I was younger, the story bothered me because A, my name is Sarah, and uh, B, I got in trouble a lot for laughing inappropriately when I was a child. And so I could really relate to Sarah getting caught laughing at something. I didn't really like how Sarah was treated in the story. She got in trouble for laughing and then denying it. I think again as a kid who often got in trouble for laughing a lot, I felt like she was unfairly treated. Now again, I didn't know all the other parts of the story because when you're a kid, you only hear part of the story. So to me, Sarah at old age just told she was having a baby found that funny. Well, really we know there's different pieces that we'll go into in a minute about why Sarah is laughing. And later, I think I didn't like the story because it hit a little too close to home. I've understood Sarah from the Bible's disappointment at a deep level. I remember being 29 years old. Um, and I know what you're thinking, aren't you 29 now? No, that's not true. Um, I was 29 years old and I was dating the person that I was pretty sure I was going to marry. And he and I had started talking about our marriage. And I was working at a church and I knew I was being appointed to a new church and him and I had, I think, met for lunch and one of my colleagues said to me, you know, I don't think um, you're going to marry him. And for me, I was so angry 
It was only made worse when the colleague said, women like you tend not to get married until they are older. I already felt older. It's been a lot of years since then. I didn't realize that I would feel even older. But the colleague's words echoed in my ear for a long time, and especially a year later, when the relationship ended and no wedding happened. I remember sitting in a prayer room at the church, crying with my prayer partner, and she actually said the words from this story. Is there anything too wonderful for God? In a weird way, it gave me hope, and in another way, it made me angry. I could relate to Sarah, disappointed for so long, waiting for the thing that she thought she wanted. And the third reason this story has bothered me is that the economy of God is confusing. I can't predict it, but we'll talk more about that later. This story is, in fact, a very complicated one. One where we were kind of jumping in and we need to have a little bit explained to us. Here's what we know. Prior to Sarah finding out about her miraculous pregnancy, God has promised Abram that he is going to be the father of a great nation. Sarai abuses Hagar and first forces her into surrogacy. That's a part of the story that we don't tell children often. Abraham himself laughs in disbelief as God tells him that he at 100 years old and Sarah at 90 will bear a child. So what does it mean for Sarah and Abraham to receive the gift of a child in spite of all of their prior actions? It seems as though the gift that they're getting has nothing to do with their ability to be faithful. Sometimes we're told this story as if Sarah's inability to be faithful is in the laughter, but really it's not. The, the story is one where they will oppress others, trying to force what they believe is the promise in their lives. So the gift has little to do with them, and that's a tough thing about God's economy. We can't seem to work our way into our gifts or our own worth, but there is something really important in this story, and that's the part of hospitality. God will be recognized. There's this three visitors. It's almost as if the Trinity is being hinted at here in this story. And here, when they come, these visitors come to Abraham, who, by the way, has just been circumcised in his really later years, and he is um, recovering there. And here there is this massive hospitality. It's not just water and bread that they are given, but an entire meal. Sarah is waiting. Now we have to understand that Sarah has been waiting. In fact, they've gotten used to this new normal. They once believed that they were being promised that they would have a child and they didn't. Everything that they thought hasn't happened and so they're existing in this new normal, something that we're hearing all the time now. And the new normal for them is disappointment, not expectation. And in the midst of the new normal is when Sarah starts to panic and does something terrible to someone else to be a surrogate of her child and treats Hagar so horribly. And yet we come back to this laughter. Sometimes laughter is a reaction to surprise or sometimes laughter is cynicism. How often in the midst of this time that we're in right now have I been reduced to absolute laughter as a friend who sent a meme that has touched a little too close to home? Sarah's laughter, we're told, is in her, it's a deep laughter. Some would even suggest a belly laugh or a laugh that goes all the way to her womb. The place of pain. What is the laughter if not the beginning of being unraveled? her expectations, her disappointment coming apart. Is anything too difficult for God? The word could also be marvelous, wonderful, astonishing, impossible. Lately, I've been quoting a lot of Walter Brueggemann, and, and this series that we're working from comes from um, Sanctified Art, which again is a great, great group. Um, they have this whole package, and while we're only doing three weeks of it, we might jump back in at some point because it's so great, but they quoted Walter Brueggemann saying this, once again, this story shows what a scandal and difficulty faith is. Faith is not a reasonable act, 
which fits into the normal scheme of life and perception. The promise of the gospel is not a conventional piece of wisdom that is easily accommodated to everything else. Embrace of this radical gospel requires shattering, shattering and discontinuing. Abraham and Sarah have by this time become accustomed to their barrenness. They are resigned to their closed future. They have accepted that hopelessness as normal. The gospel promises, or the gospel promise does not meet them in reception, hopefulness, but in resistant hopelessness. God has made laughter for me, Sarah says. Laughter is a biblical way of receiving a newness which cannot be explained. The newness is a sheer gift. Underived, unwarranted, barrenness has now become ludicrous. It can now be laughed at because there is full joy. Friends, this story can be incredibly painful, particularly for people who are experiencing what it feels like to not have what you were hoping for, whether that's infertility or a family, whatever it might be. Right now, so many of us are sitting in this place wondering, what does faith look like when none of our expectations have been met? Again, this series is going to challenge us to think about where is God in the midst of this? How can we be surprised by joy even when it feels like it's so hard to find? When we would continue to hear about Black Lives Matter protests where people are harmed, when we continue to hear about how uh, people are getting sick, when we continue to wonder where do I find the joy, I think we often have moments of laughter. What we want to remember is even when this promise is met, for Sarah and Abraham, all is not perfect. There is still a sense that they are waiting. Friends, here as we participate in the kingdom of God, may we be unraveled. May things never re like return to the old normal, but may the new normal for us be a place where we try to find hopefulness. Deep, deeply rooted. A sense that maybe we don't understand what God is doing. Maybe it's possible for us to sort of be unraveled in a way that turns us around in a different way. And that trust in this time when God could surprise us and an unexpected joy happens. As I read this story now in, in the time of my life that I'm in, in the midst of all of this new normal, I find myself laughing. Finding myself wondering, is there anything too wonderful for God? Friends, may we be a people who are on the lookout for the ways that God is doing the surprising and the wonderful as we start this series on being unraveled. We're going to join together in a meal now, a meal that is kind of an ordinary thing, but a surprising thing. Talk about being unraveled. The disciples really thought they knew what Jesus was about, each of them having a different understanding, and all of that being unraveled by the experience of Holy Week. So we're going to participate. If you are at home, you can grab whatever you would like, whether it is goldfish and some juice or a little piece of bread and whatever you have on hand we're going to do communion together in just a moment if you would like if you're watching this on a sunday morning you can get the elements ready and hop over to our facebook group um, as we will be um, doing communion together live on that all right let us join together We are going to do um, part of this together responsively. You can either read the responses with me or share them with the people in your home. It will take, and we're gonna take communion together at the end. So remember, whatever you wanna grab at home as elements, um, you are welcome to grab those now as we gather together in communion. As we gather here today in the sight of God to join in Holy Communion, know we are only a screen with a part. The God uh, of all creation is not beholden to bounds of time or place that we may be together in this mystical place though God and the mystery of holy communion we become one creation one body 
in one church. Together we share a table of enormous width along a horizontal plane as it gently contours along our heavenly body. The table is laid bare, waiting for God to show up. We may feel silly about the elements that we bring, but let's not forget a time when Jesus, during his life, had the not right elements. At a wedding feast, Jesus proclaimed, my time has not yet come, yet was persuaded by his beloved mother Mary, and he turned water into wine. So whatever you have in this moment is perfect, whether it's goldfish, crackers, juice, whatever you have. So, saying together, God is with you. It is good to be joyful as we give thanks to you, holy God. You created us in your image and gave us life with your breath. You lo your love does not falter even when we neglect or forget that love. You have liberated us from our bondage and continue to ease our burden. So let us join together with the words on your screen. Holy, 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 God of power and grace, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are our holy God and blessed is your child Jesus. Your spirit descended upon him so that he could proclaim good news to the poor. Heal the sick, feed the hungry, and, and covert the sinners and liberate the captive. His life gave birth to the church through a new covenant, one born out of the Holy Spirit, whose power dwells within us today. On the night in which he gave himself over, Jesus took bread, broke the bread, gave thanks to you and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks and said, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. Drink from it in remembrance of me. In remembering the mighty acts of Jesus, we offer ourselves as living witness, proclaiming the mystery of faith. Let us say together, Christ has died, Christ, Christ has risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered together in this holy, although separated space on the gifts of these elements. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for the world. The bread is made from many grains, from many fields, yet was formed into a single loaf. Because there is one God, we though many in many homes are one body. So go ahead, grab a piece of whatever it may be. You'll notice that I'm gonna offer Lamont from the inside of here. This is COVID times. This, my friend, is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This, my friend, is the cup of Christ. Whoops, let's get some more for you. <laughs> you can drink out of that if you want to. <laughs> You're fine. This is the blood of Christ. Amen. So as we close, I want to leave you with this blessing and this thought comes from James 1 and 2. It says this about joy, as we just heard. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Father, I just uh, speak blessing over your people, over your church. I, I thank you, Lord. Um, that there will be a wellspring of joy that would rise up in our hearts as we travel through this life and the uncertainties of life. I, I pray that we find deep joy that cannot be taken away. Remind us that joy is not as fleeting as happiness, but there is a, a, a deep sense of belief and knowing and celebration as we understand joy. So we just thank you, we love you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we all said together, amen, amen. God bless you as you go.